let's see, um, P1, P2, P3, P4. What subsequence is going to converge to P if you know this thing is a limit point? Take a neighborhood, let's say 1 over n. Would you agree eventually one of these points lives inside? Let's say P101. Oh, but then you could take, what, how do you find another point that's, that's how, do you, how do I construct a subsequence that gets closer? How about 1 over n plus 1? And then take a point. Now, would you agree there, there has to be points inside, right? In fact, how many? Infinitely many. So, I mean, you could get, be unlucky if you pick a point here and it happens to be, be P50. You don't want your subsequence to go P101 and then P50, right? Because it has to increase its index. But since there are infinitely many, there must be one beyond P101 that's inside here, et cetera. So R has a limit, call it P. Uh, use uh, this to construct a subsequence. And I, I'm just, I'm just, I'm not going to write that out, but it's, it's basically using this idea. Okay. Dot, dot, dot. Okay, so very nice, very beautiful idea. Every, if, if, if the, the space is somehow small enough, compact enough, X uh, must be sequentially compact. Every sequence must have a, must have a subsequential, uh, uh, must have a, a convergent subsequence. Okay. All right. So we're gonna uh, gonna appeal to this fact uh, often, uh, and you'll see it come up quite a bit. The next thing I want to talk about. Oh yeah, question, Willie. Yeah, yeah, so um, maybe a more formal way of saying that is we already showed a theorem that P, because it's a limit point of, of these, these things, would you agree that, that it must have a sequence converging, a sequence of these points converging to P? We've, we've shown that already. But now the problem is when you write down that sequence, its indices may be completely mixed up. But then you could just... I think what you're suggesting is you could just fix that, right? So uh, alt alternatively, um, there exists a sequence in R converging to P. We've already shown that. But maybe it looks something like this. Maybe P101, P50, P47, P210, P300, P one p eight dot 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 but would you agree when you have found that sequence it's not a subsequence technically because its indices don't increase but you it, there has to be a subsequence where the indices do increase why there are infinitely many beyond this one so there's got to be one that's bigger that's the next bigger one that's the next bigger one and when you've done when you've picked these ones out you have a subsequence you could certainly do that as well okay excellent question Okay, so um, the other thing that I wanted to begin talking about is the very, very important notion of a Cauchy sequence. What is a Cauchy sequence named after the mathematician Cauchy? Now, the whole point of studying Cauchy sequences is to try to uh, to, to get a handle on the following question. How can I tell, how do you, can you tell if a sequence converges if I don't know its limit, if I don't know its limit already? In other words, you know, a lot of our definition as it stands now requires us to know what the limit is in order for us to, to, to sort of figure out if it converges.
Okay. Everybody appreciate the, the question? It's like, you know, you might have a sequence that you don't know if it converges or not, uh, and you have no idea what its limit is. Is there a way to tell if the sequence converges without having to know its limit first? OK, and so our, our idea is to define a kind of sequence that, um, that gives us a, uh, a criterion for perhaps telling. So let's make a definition. Oh, so let, let, me, let me tell you what the idea is first before I make the definition. So you have a bunch of points. And I can't tell if these things are converging. But would you agree, if they converge to something that I don't know, they must be getting close to each other? That's the idea. Idea, if they do converge, then the, the, uh, the, the PN must be getting close to each other. That's the idea. So that's the motivation for our definition. There's a definition. We're going to say PN, the sequence PN, is Cauchy. It's a Cauchy sequence. And here's what it means. It's a Cauchy sequence if the following is true. For every epsilon bigger than 0, there exists an N such that so look familiar? Such that past some point in the sequence, the nth term, all the terms, instead of saying that they're close to p, will demand that they be close to each other. Okay? Such that, so how do I say that in, in formal language? If you have two indices bigger than n, that this implies what? Good. The distance from Pn to Pm, Pm to Pn, is less than epsilon. Now I want you to compare the two notions above. Okay. And now let's prove our first theorem. What's the relationship between these two notions? Are they the same? What do you think at least is true? Good. If it converges, it, it's Cauchy. So let's prove that. If Pn converges, then Pn is Cauchy. Proof. We can do this. All we have to do is, uh, is try to um, show that points get close to each other. And you know they get close to p. So how are you going to show that they get close to each other? OK, maybe like the other example, we should give, a, give our idea before we try writing down the proof. What do, what do you think it is that I'm going to try to bound the distance between? So here's a proof idea first. What am I going to bound? What do I want to bound? Good. The distance from Pn, I better use this is an arbitrary metric space, distance from Pn to Pm. What do I know is small? Pn to P and Pm to P. Well, can you relate those distances to this one? Triangle inequality strikes again. Happy with that? That's the idea. This is small eventually. This is small eventually. Therefore, this is small. And you can tell me at what point it is small. So here we go. Given, you can almost do this now, probably. Just tell me what to say. Given epsilon bigger than 0, you probably state what you know first. There exists a n such that little n bigger 